Math 1332, Chapter 10, Probability and Counting Techniques. Section 3, Combinations. Video 1, Combinations versus Permutations. In the previous section, we learned about permutations and how to count them. Specifically, a permutation is an arrangement of objects where order matters. That's kind of a definition, so let's highlight it. If we have indistinct objects and we want to select R of the objects, the number of permutations is given by this formula. We have n total objects and we want to know the number of permutations if we select R of them. In other words, if we select some of them and the order matters in which we select them, then the formula is a ratio of factorials. The numerator is the total number of objects factorial but the denominator isn't the number we're selecting, it's the difference between the total and, their, and the number we're selecting factorial. However, if we have n objects with repetitions, like when we had the eight books, two of which were Wuthering Heights, three of which were Tom Sawyer, I believe, and then the others were Les Miserables, Huckleberry Finn, and Animal Farm. If we have n objects with repetitions, where there are k1 of the first object. Remember, when I type this, I would rather type it as a subscript, but the editor in Zoom won't let me type subscripts. But if there are n objects with repetitions and there are k1 of the first object, k2 of the second object, k3 of the third object, and so on, then the number of permutations, which doesn't have a nice little symbol like this, then the number of permutations is the total number of objects factorial divided by the number of the first object factorial, so K1 factorial, the number of the second object factorial, so K2 factorial, the number of the third object factorial, so K3 factorial, and we continue that until we account for all the objects. Uh, there is the condition that K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus however many Ks you have is equal to N. In other words, you have to count all the different objects even if they only show up once. So we talked about that in the previous video, but we also did something, or I kind of snuck something in. In our discussion of permutations, I casually mentioned that the order of the objects, that if the order of the objects didn't matter, pardon me, I casually mentioned that if the order of the, ob of the objects didn't matter, then it's called a combination. So let's formally define a combination is an arrangement of objects where order does not matter. For example, suppose I want a trip for four. Naturally, I'm going, but I have to pick three other people to go with me. Let's say I have seven friends I'm considering and I have to pick three. Would it matter what order I picked them? Nope, it wouldn't. It would not. I'm trying to pick a combination of three out of seven friends. It doesn't matter, matter if I pick Mo and then Larry and then Curly to go on the trip or if I pick Curly and then Mo and then Larry, those same three people would go on the trip. The order I pick them does not matter. So as a combination, Mo, Larry, and Curly is the same combination as Curly, Larry, and Mo because the order doesn't matter. It's the same set of three people. But by contrast, let's say I need to pick three friends out of seven, but this time, the first friend picked will be, will be the best man at my wedding, the second will be a groomsman, and the third will be an usher. In this case, the order I pick them matters. Let's pick the uh, best man first. I pick you. Let's pick a groomsman next, and then let's pick an usher next. So since the order matters, uh, this would be a permutation. So before we go any further, it's going to be critical to identify when a situation represents a permutation or a combination. The deciding factor is whether or not the order you select them matters. If the order you select them matters, it's a permutation. Otherwise, if the order doesn't matter, it's a combination. At the end of this video, I'll give you a gimmick how to remember which one is which, and it will address an issue that, or I should say, 
issue that I brought up several videos ago. But first, let's, let's do a little exercise. Let's decide which of the followings are permutations and which are combinations. You're welcome to pause the video and see if you can figure out which is which. Just remember, when you're picking whatever it is you're picking, if the order matters, then it's a permutation. But if the order doesn't matter, then it's a combination. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out which is which. All right. If you pause the video, great. If you didn't, oh well, you blew the opportunity. All right, let's take a look at the first example. 12 fans are at a concert, excuse me, 12 fans at a concert are chosen to go backstage after the show. When it's all said and done, does it matter what order I pick them in? No, there's no benefit to being picked first as to being picked last, only to being picked, period. The order does not matter. Since the order does not matter, that means that this is a combination. That may be under my picture. If it is, it says combination. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. From a list of 25 dishes he knows how to cook, Alex chooses different dishes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on his girlfriend's birthday. I'm trying to stretch this over. Hold on, folks. I know it's nitpicky, but a little OCD there. Okay, um, permutation or combination. In other words, does it matter what order he cooks the meals in? Yes, it does. Because let's say for breakfast, he makes eggs Benedict. For lunch, he makes uh, a killer chicken salad. And for dinner, he makes uh, steak and crab legs. Would that be the same if he had the steak and crab legs for breakfast and the eggs Benedict for dinner? No, it wouldn't. In this case, the order that he chooses the meals, and specifically the order in which he prepares them, uh, makes for a different set of meals. Since the order matters, this is a permutation. C. A state elects a governor and lieutenant governor from a pool of nine candidates. So imagine nine people in a row and the state, well, we'll just say for now that the state is a single person and the state goes, governor, lieutenant governor. Does it matter what order he selects them in? Of course, whoever he selects first will be the governor. Whoever he selects second will be the lieutenant governor. Since the order matters, this is a permutation. Remember, order matters is a permutation. Order doesn't matter is a combination. After this page, I'll show you a way to never get them mixed up again. D, a state elects two senators from a pool of nine candidates. What do you think? We got nine candidates in a row and I'm the state and I walk by and I go, Senator, Senator, does it matter what order I point to two people in? For example, if I point to Bart first and then Lisa second, is that the same as pointing to Lisa first and then Bart second? It is the same because the order doesn't matter. Both end up being senators. So since the order doesn't matter, this is a combination. Next. E, you choose a 10 letter password from the letters of the alphabet. Does it matter what order you put the letters in? Of course it does. Passwords are kind of sensitive to the order of the characters. This is a permutation because the order that you select these letters matters. Of five optional community service projects, Joe picks two of them. Let's say the five projects are, well, let's just say Joe selects uh, picking up trash off the street and helping at a soup kitchen. Does it matter what order she picks them in? No. If Joe decides to pick up trash off the street first and then decides to uh, work at a soup kitchen, she's going to do the same work as if she decided, I'm going to work at a soup kitchen. Uh, and I'll also pick up trash off the street. The order does not matter, which makes this a combination. All right, so I'd like to end this video with something that will put closure on an issue that I brought up previously, and that's about that com oh, sorry, combination lock. Uh, I forget which video it was. I forget which section it was. Um, it was probably in the section about the fundamental uh, counting principle, but 
I think, assuming everybody knows what a combination lock is, it has uh, 16 numbers on it, zero through 59. Usually you spin the dial in the middle one way until you get the first number, then you spin it the other way until you get the second number, and then you spin it. I think it's clockwise, counterclockwise, and then clockwise, and some other criteria, but there are three key numbers that you have to hit in a particular order. So why do I keep calling a combination lock a quote combination lock, knowing what you know now? In which one does order matter, a combination or a permutation? The order matters in a permutation. It does not order matter in a combination. When you have a combination lock, does the order matter in which you do the numbers? For example, let's say that your combination is uh, 15, that's not what I wanted, 15, 52, uh, 31. Will the lock open if you go 15, 31, 52? It better not. So does the order matter in a combination lock? Absolutely. So why do I keep going combination lock? Because it shouldn't be called a combination lock. In a combination, the order doesn't matter. In a permutation, the order matters. It should not be called a combination lock. lock. It should be called a permutation lock because the order matters. And that's the gimmick I have always used since the first time learning about permutations and combinations to remember which one does the order matter and which one does the order not matter. The gimmick is the following uh, statement. A combination lock is misnamed. It should be called a permutation lock because the order matters. A combination lock is misnamed. It should be called a permutation lock because the order matters. And that helps to remember that permutation, the order matters, and combination, the order doesn't matter. I won't call it combination lock anymore. I'll just call it combination lock. <laughs>